cartel lunacy set stage for historic precious metal shortage. Well, there's no rest for the weary in the battle against, for the lack of a better term, the pure, unmitigated evil that has overtaken this planet, i.e. the usage of advanced manipulative technology as regards financial market trading, economic data reporting, and current events dissemination to commandeer wealth and power for an increasingly small percentage of the population at the expense of not only the 99% plus, but their descendants, many of which have yet to be born. To the average one percenter, all is well, as the trickle-down effect of printing trillions of fiat currency units to directly support financial assets like stocks and bonds, which indirectly inflates real estate, fine art, and a host of other one percent asset classes, create, cumulatively speaking, the largest asset bubble in global history. You see, one percenters own nearly all the world's wealth. And when you know it, the exact moment in time when such wealth inequality started exploding was the 1970s, i.e. just after the gold standard was abandoned, enabling the handful of elites running nations and printing presses to appoint themselves into leadership roles that in essence enable them to print as much currency as they want and hand it out to the crony capitalists and politicians that best serve their goals of maintaining wealth and power. In the process, destroying the 99 plus percent through confiscation by inflation, economic decline, and from a larger, more philosophical perspective, demoralization. And nowhere more so than the manipulative technology and printing of price oppression, capital of the world, the United States of inflation, economic destruction, and crony capitalism. To wit, while 1% of the global population, population controls 45% of the world's wealth, the top 1% of America's population owns 63% of America's private wealth, a number which care of the horrific market-manipulating and economy-destroying efforts of its leaders, from Tricky Dick to the King of Debt himself, is expected to rise above 70% just three years from now. And yes, care of the power of the reserved currency printing press, whose abuse is unparalleled in the thousand-year history of fiat currency inflation, and market manipulation expertise, which even the Bank of Japan marvels at, whilst the Bank of China literally copies it, those numbers dwarf any other major nation or region. Which is why the social unrest that produced a Donald Trump presidency is about to get a lot worse. Well, that and the end of America's LOL, second longest ever economic expansion, at a time when the real labor market has never been worse, the real cost of living, living never higher, household debt is at an all-time high, at rates far higher than the 1% receiving the Fed's nearly free money that they get, and oh yeah, government-supported financial markets are surging, whilst the corporations issuing those securities, who the 99% sweat and toil for, are losing money, laying off workers, and embracing technology that will dramatically reduce employment demand for years to come. Throw in the Fed's latest insult to injury, in raising rates due to the arrogance of believing it can control financial markets irrespective of the massive economic damage such actions cause, said 99%. And you can see why the winds of change are blowing more strongly than ever. Remember, the 1% are essentially unimpacted by higher rates, now that the government both overtly and covertly is supporting financial markets. However, for the 99%, not only are the rates they pay to borrow money, which as we speak is at its highest ever level, are rising, but the rates banks pay on their deposits have not been raised a whit. Similarly, corporations, municipalities, and the federal government may owe much more money than at any time in history. However, as real market-based rates are actually lower than when the Fed started raising rates 18 months ago, the cost of servicing this debt remains near all-time lows. Not to mention the liquidity in the Fed-supported bond market that allows them to continue selling bonds at such low yields. And of course, via the Fed's 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time open market operations, the stocks and bonds of these corporations have been relentlessly supported, not only enabling their cumulative insolvency to be masked, but their principals, most of whom award themselves vast amounts of in-the-money options based not on corporate but manipulated stock performance to become wildly wealthy, while the rest of the companies and similarly government's constituencies suffer from the economic damage that such manipulations cause, to the point that the title of my dot-com valuations in a Great Depression era article last month simply cannot be understated. Globally, the impact is at least as deleterious, given that the world's other 180-plus currencies do not enjoy reserve currency status. 
which, completely ignored by the 1% owned fake news media, has resulted in the average fiat currency having lost roughly half its purchasing power since the historic, world-destroying financial crisis they caused, whose cure has been far worse than the disease, as evidenced by the unprecedented economic and currency collapse since 2008, coupled with an equally unprecedented debt explosion and inflationary outbreak the latter of which is equally insultingly deemed deflation by the aforementioned unfathomably fallacious economic data the government engineers, which not only enabled them the cover to keep history's largest, most destructive fiat Ponzi scheme going, but deprives the growing entitlement brigade of the cost of living adjustments they so desperately need to survive which will only grow exponentially due to a combination of fiat currency inflation, debt suffocation, the replacement of perhaps half the world's jobs with automation, and the most deleterious demographic trends in global history. In a world of 7.4 billion people, the vast majority of whom are desperately trying to make ends meet, these trends are coalescing into what will unquestionably be a financial implosion far greater than the Depression, and far greater than 2008. As this time, the currency crisis that is rapidly engulfing the world's second and third world nations will destroy the first world too, culminating in the collapse of much of the dollar's remaining purchasing power. Everywhere one looks, the impact of this destruction is being witnessed. From commodity prices breaking through their 2008 crisis bottom lows, to global interest rates, care of record central bank support, trading at 1,000-year lows, to migration crises so powerful they are tearing nations and continents apart. And trust me, it will only get worse, as in a world of limitless currency and dying economic activity due to cyclical and secular reasons, compounded a thousandfold by hyperinflationary monetary policy, there's no way to reverse the irreversible, no matter what accounting, media, or market manipulation is attempted. And nowhere is this more evident than in the increasingly dysfunctional, draconian, and dangerous political, stru political structures that are forming. Nowhere more so than in the so-called most civilized nation, America, where the aftermath of the historic Trump victory has produced a banana republic-like government on a par with its banana republic-like central bank. As these political, economic, social, monetary, and military horrors have played out, one thing that has been as constant as the 10 o'clock a.m. PPT dead ringer has been the powers that be's vehemence to suppress its main monetary competition, physical gold and silver, i.e. the only real money the world has ever known. To that end, I have dedicated 15 years of my life, both personally and professionally, to exposing this crime, which in and of itself is more responsible for the monetary inflation, economic destruction, political chaos, and social unrest we are living through than any other factor. Starting at GATA circa 2003, through the last six years as marketing director of Miles Franklin Precious Metals, one of the nation's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers, I have dutifully discussed not only the cartel's daily machinations, but the catastrophic ramifications of their crimes, in among other things, destroying the global mining industry and tens of thousands of investors. Since 2011, I have warned people that these factors and market manipulation that has unquestionably grown at an exponential rate will make it increasingly difficult to profit from paper PM investments like mining shares, ETFs, closed-end funds, and of course comics and LBA, LBMA traded futures and options. Conversely, I focused on the virtues of owning physical gold and silver, which on a personal basis I went all in on in early 2011, before joining Miles Franklin later that year. As a longtime commodities expert, having spent a decade as a Wall Street buy and sell side energy analyst, followed by five years in the mining industry, no one is more attuned to supply and demand fundamentals. And when it comes to said factors in precious metals, the balance has never been more fragile. Now that, as global demand hovers around all-time highs, cartel attacks notwithstanding, mine supply has entered a long-term dramatic decline, whilst above ground available for sale inventories have been reduced to, for all intents and purposes, all-time lows certainly in relation to overall demand. This, whilst well, the opposite is the case for essentially all other commodities, which, unlike precious metals, were supported by fraudulent policies and thus are now facing long-term gluts, particularly oil, many of which are unpre as unprecedented as regards the bleakness of their respective outlooks. In recent years, particularly since the powers that be went all in on daily unrelenting market manipulation after Election Day, the suppression of precious metals has, for lack of a better description, gone off the charts. 
However, now that prices have been smashed to their lowest inflation-adjusted levels ever, albeit above the ultimate bottoms nominally from a year and a half ago, they have yield, yielding unprecedented anomalies like the lowest ever silver to gold and platinum to gold ratios, not to mention vanishing premiums on most numismatic products. The cartel is simply running out of ammunition to keep this historic game of monetary chicken going on much longer. To wit, the vast majority of miners operate, are operating at or near losses at current prices. And if they're not, it's likely due to high grading and extreme cost cutting, which ultimately will destroy their long-term production outlooks. This, with record amounts of debt, hyperinflated share counts, and a level of capital strangulation no other sector has been forced to endure, no matter how bad their business. Worse yet, the all-in cost of production on an industry-wide basis, that is, to replace reserves, is likely at least $1,500 an ounce for gold and the high 20s for silver, which is why reserves have been plunging for years and supply will continue to decline for years to come. Consequently, as I discussed last week, the days of blitzkrieg cartel raids erasing huge chunks of valuation are a thing of the past like 2011's Sunday Night Paper Silver Massacre and Operations PM Annihilation 1 and 2, and 2012's Leap Day Violation and 2013's Alternative Currency Destruction Raid. They've been replaced by the Death by a Thousand Cuts water torture we've been experiencing for years, which, while it's extremely frustrating, has done little to the price but hold it within a relatively narrow trading range, straddling the industry's cost of producing already operating mines which are undoubtedly their most intense before, during, and after key attack events, like Fed meetings, jobs reports, and significant geopolitical events. To wit, the relentless suppression of precious metals since the Fed raised rates earlier this month, despite the weakest economic data since 2008, which clearly is getting worse with each passing day, to the point that it couldn't be more obvious we are in recession now, with a lot more pain to come, as the data collapses further throughout 2017. In fact, as I write this morning, interest rates are hitting their lowest levels since the election, at the exact same levels as, drumroll please, the very morning of the rate hike two weeks ago, when following utterly horrifying, contracting retail sales, wholesale inventories, and CPI inflation data, the benchmark 10-year yield had plunged to 2.12%. Yes, 2.12%, as I write, following this morning's horrifying durable goods in Chicago Fed National Activity Index reports, the former of which plunged from April's 0.7% decline to an unexpected 1.1% decline in May, and the latter which plunged from April's plus 0.49 to an even more unexpected minus 0.26 in May. In other words, shouting recession from the rooftops following the past two quarters of barely positive GDP growth, and by growth, I mean the real recession the government is desperately trying to mask with fraudulent statistical adjustments, which is getting so bad it surely will be unable to be masked no matter what adjustments are applied. Back to precious metals, this weekend was relatively news-free, aside from the bailout of two Italian banks marking the biggest taxpayer-funded bailout in Italian history, you know, as opposed to the, uh, the government-funded bailout of Monte Pasci and uh, Spain's Banco Popular in the past uh, couple of weeks, accelerating tensions between Saudi Arabia and Qatar, Senate Republicans proclaiming there's not a chance an Obamacare repeal will, be, will occur anytime soon, as the legacy Obamacare system is in freefall collapse, the lowest gasoline demand was reported in six years, the flattest yield curve since the 2008 crisis, Moody's warning that even a slight decline in financial markets will yield a $3 trillion corporate pension shortfall, and McDonald's announcing it will be adding employee replacement kiosks to the first 2,500 of its stores this year, presaging the aforementioned industry-wide employment collapse that must inevitably result. Thus, while the 190th Sunday night sentiment raid of the past 200 weekends wasn't particularly unexpected, the massive $2 billion notional paper gold attack at exactly 4 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, i.e. the open of LBMA paper trading, certainly was. This as, I kid you not, Zero Hedge was publishing with a timestamp of exactly 4 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, an article titled, and the best performing asset since the Fed started hiking rates in December 2015 is gold. Yes, 
The MSM actually had the gall to explain how the $2 billion paper gold dumping that caused gold to plunge $13 an ounce, or 1.1%, in one minute, and silver, simply due to sympathy, to plunge $0.25 cents an ounce, or 1.5%, also in that same minute, as a, quote, fat-fingered accidental trade. Yes, just like the dozens of similarly fat-fingered trades precious metals have been the victim of over the years, compared to the zero times such trades air to the upside. Not to mention, yet again, just as precious metals were gaining some positive upside momentum after having endured the vicious post-rate hike onslaught the Fed, the cartel had unleashed, to little substantive effect over the past two weeks. And by the way, if it was a fat-fingered trade, how come the price didn't suddenly rebound when the fat-fingered trade was undone? And by the way, when the 4 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time mob hit occurred, Stock futures and bond yields were essentially unchanged from Friday's close, and the dollar barely higher, compared to now, as I write, at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, as the Dallas Fed Manufacturing Index was just reported to have plunged from 23.3 in May to 12.3 in June, when the 10-year yield has fallen to the days and years low of 2.12%. The dollar is down for the day, oil is being hit hard again, but miraculously, stocks surged higher after the Fed's open market operations. To the point that Zero Hedge actually wrote that global stocks are surging following the bailout of two zombie Italian banks. No, I'm really not kidding. They actually said that. So again, we're in a limbo situation with precious metals. When prices have been pushed to the lower end of the year's trading range, despite the most bullish fundamentals and inexpensive valuations in memory, Given all I have discussed today, and countless other related topics this year, the odds strongly favor a major demand response, taking us one step closer to the type of debilitating shortage we experienced in both gold and silver after the cartel's vicious attacks at the start of the 2008 crisis, and silver alone in 2011, when prices surged to $50 per ounce, into the, into $50 an ounce, 2013, after the aforementioned alternative currencies destruction raid, and 2015, around the time of the Shemitah. Only this time, the shortages may not be reversible by market manipulation, particularly if accompanied by even the slightest market crisis. Central banks will no longer have the ammunition to save the day, as not only have they already spent most of their ammunition, but their cumulative credibility has been reduced to somewhere between zero and negative territory, leaving them as a last resort to hyperinflate their currencies into oblivion to buy themselves the maximum amount of time under, under, which under such circumstances wouldn't be very long. And one more topic to note before I go. Is this weekend's dramatic declines in the cryptocurrency space? Yes, Bitcoin's price of just under $2,500 amounts to barely a 15% decline from its record levels. However, the vast majority of speculative, and in many cases fraudulent, cryptocurrencies, particularly ICOs funded with the spiraling feedback loop provided by Ethereum and its ultra-thin secondary market, have plunged, rightfully so, by 25% or more, highlighting just how much risk the sector has, and how, in many cases, it is barely discernible from the heights of the dot-com bubble. Especially said ICOs, as given the losses sustained, it's highly likely various regulatory authorities will be coming after these centralized corporate structures with inventions. Not so with Bitcoin, of course, given that it is completely centralized. Not to mention it never had a public offering and decidedly does not have a business to be shut down or regulated. This is why it has such incredible world-changing, long-term, and perhaps short-term potential as well. However, this weekend's action also highlights in spades that the reason to invest in it is, despite being a fellow dual destroyer of the fiat regime with gold and silver, entirely different from the investment thesis of gold and silver. In Bitcoin's case, you are betting that it will be a gold-like store of value and or the future of utilitarian money. Whilst in gold and silver's case, there is no betting involved whatsoever, given the 5,000-year track records of being the best store of value assets the world has ever known. To that end, the need to protect yourself from what's coming, financially and otherwise, has never been more urgent. And if your desired protection prescription is precious metals, particularly if you seek the best possible storage options, we humbly ask you to call Miles Franklin at 800-822-8080 or go to milesfranklin.com and register for online purchasing and give us a chance to earn your business. And as always, I can reach by email at